It's New Brew Thursday! Woo We're at Library Ale House. And uh, with me right now is Tom, the general manager. And everyone knows Alex P. Davis. Hi, guys. So we finally got him on the show because we had to come to him. Whatever. Ooh. <laughs> so, Tom, tell us a little bit about uh, Library Ale House. What's, what, what can one expect when they come to this magnificent establishment? Well, I think the best thing about Library Ale House is just the atmosphere, you know, beyond having tons of craft beer and, and great food to pair with it, I think that's just what lacks a lot of times in places. Yeah. You know, you, people can come here and feel like they're family. Right on. In Santa Monica, Library House is in Santa Monica. It's a great little area down here. Parking's a little bit of an issue. I don't think I've ever come here and not gotten a parking ticket, but that's just me. I'm just stupid that way. I park in places I'm not supposed to. And Santa Monica. You can, you can send me a DM on Twitter. I'll tell you all the secrets. <laughs> so, um, but you guys have a great revolving tap list here. You, you do yeah. a lot of really fantastic beers. Everyone that comes here is super nice. You know, anytime I've ever I've come in here, it's I've always found people that are like friendly and want to have a good time. And well, I think part of it is uh, the culture of the staff. We we make them happy. They like to work here, so they're happy to keep guests happy. I think yeah. Library Ale House is uh, the quintessential uh, corner pub. I mean, Absolutely. it is, to me, it's the seminal place in Santa Monica. I think you guys started in 95. I was here the first time in 97. I don't get up here hardly enough, but uh, I'm not going to say it's because of the parking. But uh, <laughs> I, I love it, and it's just, you're right, it has that comfortable feeling. It's the kind of place, home brewers, beer fans, come in here, try great beer, bring great beer. Share it with these guys, they'll let you do it. I won't but, say no, I won't say no. But bring in your home brew, bring in a special bottle you have, celebrate, come down here, and it's such a great neighborhood, and this is just a great bar. So, uh, Alex, what do you do here? Uh, right now, I am the social media coordinator, so whenever you see something go out on Facebook, you see something go out on Twitter, that's me. Uh, I hope you think it's awesome. That's a lot of pressure, awesome. that you're, a lot of responsibility you're giving him. <laughs> you know? Thousands of people daily see his opinion of your place. You sure you're willing well, to allow that? I'm constantly monitoring, so oh, okay. to make sure I don't get too sarcastic. Exactly. Plus, you know, if you have uh, if you have any beer geekery type questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. Know. Give you a recommendation. Yeah. So, is this what you always wanted to do as a child, or? Well, considering the thinking, fact I want to work at Library Ale House. Considering the fact that I, I wasn't a huge drunk when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it took me till I was probably. 12, 23, 24. Yeah. yeah. 12, 13. No, that was wine. My palate was actually raised on wine. My, uh, my parents would give me little sips. My stepdad, huge wine guy, used to work at Red Carpet way, way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, so my palate was raised on wine. I got into beer probably a year or two out of college, really, really big. Had my epiphany at another quasi-local place, Lucky Baldwin's. Uh, in Pasadena, it was, uh, it was a hey, bottle. Of, Farmworth, great place. Oh yeah, it was, it was a bottle of West Mala Triple that did it. As I'm sure it has for so many yeah. others. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're you also attend bar here occasionally? Uh, I haven't I haven't attended bar yet, but you can see me all around doing all manner of other things. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but how do the like if if you're a newbie, you don't really know a lot about craft beer, and you come in here, um, how's your staff with beer knowledge, that kind of stuff? They're great. We're actually putting them through the uh, certified Cicerone program. Nice. They're gonna all be certified beer servers by next year. I'm a certified Cicerone. Awesome. Um, so. Just come and ask anybody yes. to be able to, especially a neophyte. They can they can guide you along to a few beers that are great for you, and or all the way up to. They won't try to convince you that like you know Duval's just a stronger Bud Light. <laughs> No, it's, no, no, it's a good gateway beer. Let me know if they do. The flavor profile. It is a good oh, yeah, and the, Alex, the carbonation. Are you a certified Cicerone? I'm not. You're going to be, though. I'm, I'm not even on. a beer server yet, but I'm just waiting for the so ale house to pay for it. let's cheer for your certi <laughs> certified Cicerone. Absolutely. Oh, you guys can cheer, too. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> so what are we cheering with? What, what are we drinking today? We've got a little uh, Kern River Citra double IPA right now. The, uh, so delicious, the, smile. the double <laughs> IPA that's been tearing up the craft beer scene as of late. Growlers exactly. trading, it's growlers trading like gold on BA right now. No, they now. don't bottle this yet, do they? No. In fact, this is probably the second time it's made it down to LA. I remember probably five, six months ago, one of the first batches made it over to Surly Goat, you know, Ryan Sweeney's place over right. in West Hollywood. And I tried it there and I was absolutely blown away. I mean, it's just that huge you know, big stone fruit nose it's got. And uh, I've been searching for it down here ever since, but they've only been doing growler fills up at the brew pub up until now. Wow. Yeah. Well, this is this is an awesome beer. It's got some really great floral notes on it. The, obviously, a lot of citrus. 
<laughs> Hence no. no. It's really well balanced so far, double IPA, because yeah. it doesn't have huge alcohol heat. It's right around 8%, even though it's got these uh, great citra hop components and flavor profiles. It dries it's out still really nice. Really nice for uh, IPA. I mean, yeah, there's not a huge malt background. Don't I can see drinking so, uh, several dry and firm, but it's not astringent. Right. Really yeah, clean. Exactly. You wouldn't yeah. pick it up at eight percent. I don't think you'd guess it. No, no. not even no, a little I'd bit. pick this right around six if I was just given a taste of it. Really, really clean. I yeah. said eight point two. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Bill likes to bring the decimal points. <laughs> Tom, tell us a little bit about what we're eating. Uh, so for appetizer, we have fried pickle chips. They're uh, they're gourmet pickle chips from Alexander Valley. Uh, great company, making a whole lot of different fermented products. Uh, we deep fry them in our beer batter, serve them with pineapple salsa, chipotle aioli, and uh, our house-made ranch. Uh, for entree, we have fish tacos made with uh, wild Atlantic cod uh, on the on the green list from uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium. Uh, served with the mango salsa, salsa fresca, house-made guacamole, probably our, our most uh, popular dish. And then for dessert, we have bread pudding, uh, made in-house. It's pudding made out of bread. <laughs> it's delicious. Well, I wanted to, uh, you know, there's certain things about IPAs. They're great with spicy foods. I've always, I've always preached that. They're great with fried foods, easy breezy stuff. But I wanted to throw in something unique that people might not think about. Matter of fact, when I mentioned this to Tom and Alex, they were both looking at me like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? <laughs> IPA and bread pudding? It's true. But I think you guys will find, be pleasantly surprised when you try this. Looking forward to so it. So apparently Stephen's already trying the fried hey. pickles. How well, it is the appetizer. I mean, the it's the thing you want to get to first. Yeah. What I find is, the, uh, too is they're, they're bread and butter type pickles. Oh, really so good. like the sweet and the tang goes really, really well oh. with hoppy beers. Nice. They're delicious. It go, they, they, these pickles go well with a lot of beer, honestly. Yeah. And the chipotle really sets off the, uh, the hop as well. Oh, yeah, that's that's awesome right there. Nice, crispy. The, being that being that they're um, slightly sweet pickles, what happens is it brings out more of the fruit in the hops. Yeah, exactly. So you get this really nice, rounded uh, IPA effect. So I think it's really delicious. And the bitterness just takes care of all the fat from the beer batter. It's absolutely beautiful. Now, which one is this right here? That's the pineapple salsa right there. That'll be interesting. Sometimes, yeah, especially with an sometimes IPA. Sometimes pineapple can be a little acidic for uh, IPAs, but let's see. It's a fairly sweet salsa. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to dive into these uh, fish nope. tacos. That, Beautiful. Is, these, is this a fish taco or is this a fish quesadilla? It's a fish taco fish cut taco. in half. Okay. No, no cheese. Therefore, not a queso. Right. Right. Queso being the oh. key ingredient. It's a pesco dia. <laughs> oh, yeah. That really works with this. What I find with this, especially in something as fruity as citra, is those big stone fruit notes really marry well with the mango salsa. Brings sort of punch up the fruit in both. Yeah, the summer stone fruit, because with IBAs you get that. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of times peach, apricot, nectarine type flavors, so they go really well with the tropical, tropical things. And actually, yeah. the fattiness of the avocado and the guacamole will guacamole also. Guacamole is so great with IBAs. Our guac is awesome with hoppy beer. Well, that reminds me, I got to try it. Cause I'm a bit of a guacamole connoisseur, so it's pretty damn good. It up to my hopes and dreams. Yeah, I mean, while we don't always have citra, we do always have racer five, and that goes awesome with the mango yeah. salsa. Yeah, the malt bill on that beer is just perfect. Yeah, that that guacamole is delicious. Well, coming from a connoisseur, self style. I, 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 I make I make a mad guacamole. That's all I'm saying. Oh, hey. So I'll come over and you can throw down. All right, so let's dive into this bread pudding. It brings out the great um, crispy bitterness from the hops and the, and the fish, so it's beautiful. Yeah. All right, All right. front and center. Let's see what I you think. I licked the spoon, so. Go, Sweet. Stephen, I want to see what you think. Uh, what is your sauce? It's a caramel sauce. Caramel oh sauce. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> I want to make love to this thing. And with it's the soft beer, enough too, actually. With the beer, <laughs> it's soft and warm. I want to have little small bread children, bread pudding children. In contrast to the other dishes we've had, which kind of highlight the sweet fruit aspects of the beer, 
the bread pudding kind of brings out the, the good mid palate bitterness, is what Bill and I discussed earlier. It hits those spice notes. Yeah. It really I would out never, the ever, the ever pudding. drink an IPA with this. But that's why you have me around. It tastes amazing. Yeah, it the, really the, does. It, the winter spices play really well. It brings out this beautiful hint of cinnamon on the end palate. It brings out all these other great characteristics. And, and the, the IPA is just, it, it, it's almost a contrast pairing, but it's not because it just plays at different ends of the palate with both both. It's like they're dancing through your tongue. And you can and still pick lilies. up that little dash of fruit at the end. Yeah. A very complex stance. Yeah. Yeah. Something I can never do, <laughs> no, but something very complex, and it's really amazing. But you understand how it works. <laughs> well, Tom, thank you very much for having us. Your Thanks bar is amazing. Coming. The people here are awesome. Clearly, your staff knows a lot about beer and food and pairings, and they're very attractive. And anyway, and they're open um, seven days a week. And they're open seven days a week, nice which is benefit huge. Benefit yeah, for a local pub. So get yourself down to Santa Monica. Check out Library Ale House because it's totally worth the trip. And there's plenty of other places around here too, so you can make it a nice little beer crawl. Absolutely. But until then, stay safe and drink beer. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.